find time in your days to spend time with me. All right, I'm gonna continue on a theme that I've been on for the last couple of weeks. And <clears throat> begin with the basics. If I was Vince Lombardi, for those of you younger than 40, you can Google it. Uh, if I was Vince Lombardi and you were a member of the Green Bay Packers in the 1960s, I know some of you are like 60s, that, huh. what? Uh, I would begin football practice with this is a football, right? It's the basics. Well, there's the basics of real estate as well. And Gary Keller, the millionaire real estate agent, teaches us to always begin with models. And one of the things you'll hear people say is, I'm getting back to the basics. And the basic model of Keller Williams Realty is leads, listings, in this order, by the way, and leverage. And if you could read that, awesome. And what happens is so many real estate agents want to turn this upside down and they want to begin with creativity. In other words, I'm going to, I'm going to create a new way of doing this. <laughs> and I'm going to show everybody that my way is better. Now, there's nothing wrong with creativity. Don't hear me wrong. Creativity is awesome. However, begin with the models. And the only time that you add creativity is when you are hitting a ceiling and you can't break through that ceiling. Now it's time to bring creativity to the game. And what is this? This is in the six personal perspectives. It's in Millionaire real estate agent, what do we call this? E to P. E to P. And E stands for what? Entrepreneurial. And P stands for what? Purposeful. Purposeful. I love you guys. You know, Flint Shea came up to me and he said, John, your agents got it. They understand the millionaire real estate agent like no place else I go. I go to other cities and I'm teaching bold and I ask these questions. And they don't know the answers like your agents do. Proud teacher moment, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, of course. they do. But that's my job. I am teaching you how to become millionaire real estate agents. Because Survive to Thrive could just as easily be renamed uh, becoming a millionaire real estate agent to gross a million, to net a million, to receive a million, and then to give away a million dollars. Because I walk like, talk like, look like, and have the checkbook of a millionaire real estate agent, script, write it down. Because I walk like, talk like, look like, and have the checkbook of a millionaire real estate agent. Affirmation, you should start every day as you're getting ready for the day. I walk like, talk like, look like, and have the checkbook of a millionaire real estate agent. Act as if you do. Don't wait until you are. Will it make a difference? Say yes. Okay, so the time we bring creativity into the game is when we get stuck on this ceiling and we need to break through that ceiling and we need to be purposeful in order to do that. Now I bring creativity to the game. Okay, so back to the basics. Starting with lead generation. I am gonna work 50 weeks, five days a week. That means I'm gonna work 250 days. And my standard, not my goal, is 20 conversations. Not 19, not 18, not 17, it's 20. Now, if you are new to this, or if you are new, you've made a new commitment to the lead generation model, and you're excited, right, Laura? I'm going to do this. I'm going to have 20 conversations a day starting tomorrow. Now, I had none yesterday, but I'm going to start with 20 tomorrow, and I'm going to do it. That's like waking up in the morning and deciding I'm going to run a marathon. Matter of fact, today, I'm going to run 26.2 miles. It's not going to happen. I promise you. So 
Start with five conversations a day, make that your standard. And then once you hit five several days in a row, make your standard seven and then 10 and eventually get to 20 conversations a day. By the way, is it possible that it might be more than 20 conversations? Say yes. Whatever the number is you need in order to get the number of appointments you need in order to take the number of seller listings you need in order to hit your goal. If you look at the economic model of the millionaire real estate agent and you begin with the end in mind, Stephen Covey, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, great book. You begin with the end in mind, working your way backwards from how much money you want to net you're eventually gonna end up with, where does the economic model end? The That's it. <laughs> You're my new favorite. The economic model ends with how many appointments do I need to go on? That's the end of the economic model. Now the lead generation model picks up where the economic model ended. In other words, how many leads do I need in order to get the number of appointments that I need? The definition of a lead is what? I've got their name. I've got their phone number. I've got their address. And I've got their email address. And they're in my database. That's a lead. So how many leads do I need to get in order to get the number of appointments that I need to get in order to net the amount of money that I wanna net? My goal here is to help you create a predictable model so that you're not winging it. In other words, how many conversations do I need to have? In order to get the number of leads that I need in order to get the number of appointments that I need. All right, so if I'm working 250 days a week and I'm having 20 conversations a day, that means I am having 5,000 conversations a year. Now, the real estate conversation is defined as a two-way communication. It could be on the phone. It could be face-to-face. -face. You could be at a networking event talking to different people in the room. It could be a text message if it's two-way communication. It could be a Facebook message. What is that, instant messenger or direct, whatever it's called? Direct message. Thank you, DM. Is it yeah. DM or like DM me, I'll DM you? <laughs> DM is Instagram. Okay, whatever. <laughs> it's two-way communication. It counts as a conversation. If you bring real estate into the conversation, when you bring real estate into the conversation. Now we're having care conversations, not sale conversations. And Laura, if I were talking to you and we're in the neighborhood, right? And I, and I know you. So I'm gonna start with Laura, how's your family? How's everybody doing? Everybody's great, thank Every you for asking. Awesome, everybody's healthy, everybody's happy. Yeah. Glad to hear that. Really glad to hear that. You know, last time we spoke, you were working as a CPA at blank, blank, blank accounting firm. Are you still working there? No, actually, I just started a new adventure with um, Keller Williams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I love that, but played the part of being the guy <laughs> who's working for the accounting firm. But she's so excited that she's here. She had to change that. I love that. Laura, I'm hugging you from up here, okay? So you're working as a CPA at... Really, love that. And if I had a referral for you, are you accepting new clients? Absolutely. Cool. I'll work really hard to find someone to, to send you. And if I want to send you their information by email, what's the best email address to send that to? Blah, blah, blah. Right? Cool. And hey, I know you're busy. I'm going to let you go. But just a quick question. I wanted to share with you that, as you know, I'm working as a real estate agent at Keller Williams. And I was just curious if you knew of anybody that was going to buy a home or sell a home, would you refer them to me or would you consider referring them to me? Absolutely. Okay. Real estate conversation. Yes or yes? Yeah, yes. Yes. Was it pushy? No. no. Yes. Did it sound canned? Canned means it's a script. Did it sound like a script? No. 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 Don't shake your head, sort of, because I know it didn't. <laughs> Natalie, you're in timeout. <laughs> It didn't sound scripted. It was a conversation, wasn't it? 
Right. Did it feel pushy, Laura? Can you guys do this? Yes. Thank you. All right. So I'm having 5,000 conversations. My focus, build a relationship. Number one. Number two, get an appointment. Now, an appointment is anyone who is thinking of selling their home or buying a home. Doesn't matter if it's now, 30 days from now, six months from now, or a year from now, because a year from now, Clarice, are you going to need listings? Oh, absolutely. I was Clarissa. Oh, sorry. 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 So, are you going to need listings? I will. Yes. will you, okay. So, if I'm thinking of listing my house a year from now, do you want to meet with me? Absolutely. There you go. I am putting them into my funnel. Now, this is my opportunity funnel. My other standard is one person every day. So every day I work, I'm finding somebody who is thinking of buying a home or selling a home. And I'm going to meet with them face to face. The purpose of the conversation is to build a relationship. It's to get appointments. The other purpose of the conversation is to feed my database. The four rules or laws of your database, according to the millionaire real estate agent, are build a database, feed it every day, communicate with your database in a systematic way, service all the leads that come your way. So feed it every day means that I am adding haven't met, means I haven't met you yet. Laura, same conversation. I'm, you were talking in the neighborhood, but we haven't met yet. By the way, my name is John. Can I ask your name? Laura. Laura. Yes. Nice to meet you. Poor girl. She's probably like, whoa, what do I use my real name? Does he want a different name? <laughs> Laura, I like to keep my friends and family members updated on the real estate market. All that means is I send them interesting information on the real estate market once a month, and I call every three or four months just to check in. Would it be okay if I added you to that group? Absolutely. Cool. Now, Laura said yes. So I'm adding Laura to my database as a new met. And because I have a standard of adding one person every day, I've added 250 people over the next 12 months. So we have a standard for how many conversations we're having. We have a standard for one to face-to-face -face appointment every day. And we have a standard for adding one new person to our database every single day. The focus of the conversation is to build a relationship. It's to get an appointment. It's to feed my database. And then lastly, it's to get referrals. Who do you know that's thinking of selling their home in the next six months? Cerise says, I'm glad you asked. My next door neighbor is thinking of selling their home. Thank God they're jerks and I want them to move. Here's their name and phone number. Get their house sold. Is this making sense, guys? Yeah. All right. Last ingredient. This is the most important part. So everybody is always thinking about buying or selling real estate. The question is not whether or not they're thinking of buying or selling real estate. The question is how far, how close are they to this point right here? This point right here, this little dotted line represents the day I get serious about selling my house. It represents the day I get serious about buying a home. And typically what we find is it's seven to 10 days before they list their house or both before they start looking for a home, they get serious. Now when you're in lead generation, you're creating leads and the key to success is this giant space in the middle. It's follow-up, week one, week two, week three, week four, month two, month three, month four, month five. Eventually, it might go to quarterly, depending on their motivation. However, this never stops. I'm never going to list my home. Cool. Talk to you next month. If I ever do list my home, I'm hiring so-and-so. Awesome. Talk to you next month. 
Cerise, uh, yeah, I'll sell my house, but I want a million dollars for my home. I know it's only worth $500,000, but I'm going to list it for a million. Cool. Talk to you next month. I'm only paying 1%. Cool. Talk to you next month. There is absolutely nothing they can say that will stop me from calling because I reject rejection. No is not a word that lives in my vocabulary. No simply means not yet. And what happens is... Follow up, I'm not ready. 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 I'm glad you called. I was just talking with my wife yesterday about putting a house on the market, and we were talking about who should we call. And I'm glad you called. Let's get together because you created emotional proximity. Now, if I were to wrap this up in a bow and I were to say, welcome to real estate. Your goal is to sell homes and make money. Your goal is to sell a lot of homes and help a lot of people serve the community and build a career worth having, a business worth owning, a life worth living. And I were to say, there it is. There's the model. Do this. Would it work? Yes. You know what surprises me? When people come up to me and they say, John, I tried what you said. And oh, my God, it worked. <laughs> I got the listing. I'm like, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> this is exactly what I did to list and sell an average of 15 homes every single month for 10 years. If it worked for me, will it work for you? Yep. Okay, take yourself off mute. Uh, talk to me. What did you hear? If you're in the room, you don't have to take yourself off mute. There's not a mute button for you. Sometimes we wish there was. <laughs> yeah, I asked Monica about that conversation. Yeah. So here's, here's something funny, guys. Yesterday at Bold, we did this exercise where they put this piece of paper on your back and, and everybody in the room writes down descriptions of what, defining you. And somebody on my back wrote talkative. <laughs> I'm thinking that's funny. Really funny. Talkative. I did, I, I did see converted, but I'm not. Uh, that was not me. <laughs> it's okay. That's it's funny. okay. It's okay. It really is. All right, talk to me. What'd you hear? Yeah. Get off your get off your butt. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Larry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I, it, it really is. I mean, bold law, success is simple, right? Did I just yeah. give you a simple formula, a simple plan? I did. Now it's a kiss, it's a kiss method. Keep it simple. I don't like the stupid part. Larry, so <laughs> Keep it simple. Smarty. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Talk to me. I heard consistency. Consistency. Thank you. Consistency <laughs> is absolutely the key. It is true with everything, by the way. It really is. Do you know how long it how many days it takes to create a habit according to Gary Keller's book for one thing? How many days is it? 66. 66. I've got the smartest room in the entire country, guys. 66 days. Do it until it's a habit. Do it until when you don't do this, it feels weird. So I heard um, it's not just the destination, it's the journey. So it's you know, being about the daily activities. And if you're always just looking at the destination and not the journey, um, it, you're not going to get there necessarily. It's the yellow brick road. Yep. And there is no Emerald City. Right. 
<laughs> Diane, whatever you clear your throat, I turn around and look to see if you have something you want to say. Well, actually, there is. Shocker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting a reputation. Um, so for the past three days, James Shaw has been focused on one sentence in the ship book on page 73. Um, mm -hmm. But basically what he's saying, um, uh, Gary said something like, if, if you focus on lead generate, you may, it, it's one sentence and he talks about how if you don't lead generate, you may have the business. Like in other words, it's just, we've been hammering this one sentence about lead generating for three days. I have the page. I'm not good at remembering regurgitating. I but... have it right here. Okay, yes. I knew somebody would come yes. through. Yes. It's and right I... here. It says, um, hang on. Thank you. Not Lee. getting lead generation done day in and day out may suffice in a hot market, but it will put you out of business in a cold one. There you go. Yeah. So yeah. That, that we've been talking about, um, he's page been doing that every day. And we've been talking about it, so that's that. It just brought me back to that because it's it's facts. So I have a question for you guys. It is facts, but I've got a perception question for you because I think that we're we're looking at the market the wrong way. I really do. Is it a hot market? Yes, it is. So, and those of you who know me are afraid to answer the question because you know it's a trick question, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a hot market. As in, homes are selling quickly. They're selling with multiple offers. However, is it easy right now to find seller listings? Is it really, really hard to find seller listings? If you're working with a buyer, are you having lots of fun showing them lots of properties and writing lots of offers, getting them rejected so they can, until you finally get one accepted? Cerise is smiling, so she's lived this. <laughs> Yeah. I think that if you read that sentence again from Shift, we're in the market that's not hot mm -hmm. for realtors. You're in a shift. You have been for a while. Now, is that bad news? I don't think so. Because what have I told you in the past? It's a skills-based market the agents who have developed their skills to the highest level are the ones who are going to succeed in this market you succeed in hot markets because of what you do right this is from shift as well but you also succeed in spite of what you're doing wrong and when the market shifts and remember it's shifted for you already it did a long time ago when the market shifts that stops you stop succeeding in spite of what you're doing wrong. Shirley. My thought from that text that James um, had us focus on is what you teach us all the time. It's about having a standard. What is my standard? So when we're representing sellers right now, because it's flying off the market, have we decreased our standards? Are we not putting the sign in the yard? Are we not door knocking? Are we not taking professional photos? So it's, it's setting a standard and I'm going to do it every single time, whether I'm representing the buyer or the seller. Thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I'm reading, great job, Shirley, thank you. <clears throat> I'm reading Be Our Guest, which is about the Disney experience. And Disney is one of the most successful companies in our country, right? Incredible. Could they slack on their standards just a little bit and still have millions of people that show up at their amusement parks all over the world? The answer is yes, they could. They absolutely could. One of the things they do in order to create the Disney experience, now as I'm sharing this with you, you're going to go, that's true. I remember last time I went, they did exactly that. When you were walking through the gate, you were going through these tunnels where they show coming attractions and when you walk out the other side of those tunnels and you're looking at the Magic Kingdom, the first smell you get is popcorn. 
And that's because eight o'clock in the morning, they put all of the popcorn carts up front where people are coming in because they're recreating the movie experience. They want you to be able to walk into the Magic Kingdom, into Disneyland. And the moment you walk through those out those tunnels and you're looking at the Magic Kingdom, it, you should feel like you're walking into a movie theater. Could they stop doing that? They could, but it's a standard and they won't. Do you think they lose money on popcorn? Yeah, probably. They throw most of that away because how many people are buying popcorn at eight mm -hmm. o'clock in the morning? Matter of fact, the author of the book said well, they sell very little popcorn. They don't do it to sell popcorn. They do it to create the experience. And that's what you were talking about, Shirley. That's sticking to your standards always, no matter what. It's being a duck when you're lead generating and you don't have bad days and stay home and you don't quack because you don't feel good. It's raining. I'm not going to go out and quack today. It's hot. I'm not going to go out and quack today. My flipper hurts. My wing. They don't have flippers, do they? My wing hurts. My throat is sore from quacking so much yesterday. I didn't like the way that other duck looked at me. I'm staying home today and I'm not quacking. They just wake up and quack. It's a standard. Now for them, God put it in them. They don't have a choice. Too bad he couldn't do that for you. For me too. Right? Remember guys, when I'm having these conversations with you, I'm talking to myself. I do the same thing you do. This works for me too. This is how I work. Laura, you joined our office recently, right? How did that start? Did it start with a phone call from me? No. Did I call you and schedule time to meet with you? I didn't. Jennifer. Jennifer spoke with you, but did I, did I call you? Yes. Okay, I did call you. And we scheduled an appointment. Yes. You were here. I had a conversation with you. I scheduled an appointment. It's the same thing. Now, I know I didn't follow up with you because you followed up with me the next morning, like 6.30 in the morning. <laughs> True? True. Yeah. But I would have followed up with you. You would have been here until you got here. I'm ready. Let's get together. Yeah. It's the same thing for me. Now, I have real estate agents that I've been talking to for five years. They're here. And I hear, John, you can stop calling me. I'm not going to leave my broker. Cool. Talk to you next month. John, I'm never leaving my broker. You don't have to keep calling me. Cool. Talk to you next month. Some of those agents are in this office today because we got here. John, what could you do for me? They changed no, they didn't change their mind. They made a new decision based on new information. You guys getting this? Okay. All right. Was it a good call? Yes. Two people said yes. Awesome. <laughs> Success. All right. Time to get to work, guys. Uh, we're going to change our plan just a little bit today because it's team meeting day and we have two meetings in the office at 10 a.m. And for all of you that are here, thank you. I am grateful for that. Uh, and we're going to close Survive to Thrive and we're not going to have practice and role play scripts today if I have permission from you. Thank you. Uh, and we're going to close the call with time to get to work, right? And what is work? Work is 20 conversations. It's not 19. It's not 18. It's not 17 conversations because 17 is close enough or I'll make it up tomorrow, which you won't. Uh, if you don't have the 18th conversation, you might not have got a million dollar listing. That would have been the 18th conversation and you didn't get it because you didn't have the conversation. It can be just that simple. We're having care conversations, not sales conversations. Always lead with gratitude, bring value to every conversation. Focus on building a relationship. Focus on getting an appointment, adding somebody new to your database 
and getting a referral. Find somebody today that is thinking of selling their home, whether it's six months from now, 30 days from now, next week or a year from now, doesn't matter because you're looking for opportunity period, not just opportunity right now. Meet with somebody today that is thinking of selling their home and then follow up forever because you reject rejection because no is not a word that lives in your vocabulary. No simply means not yet. Remember that people will never change their mind, but they will make a new decision based on new information. And when you follow up forever, Natalie, I'm coming to you. Are you ready? I want to hear it loud with lots of enthusiasm and be good. <laughs> And when you follow up forever, you're creating emotional proximity. So Natalie, when you follow up forever you're, and you're creating a new, you're creating emotional proximity, when that seller makes a new decision based on new information, that new decision will be to? Only me. Natalie, <laughs> Calibri, uh, and their think of anybody else. Close enough. <laughs> Make it a great day, everybody. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, my gosh. <laughs>